Alright everyone, the ground assault has begun in the Gaza Strip. Of course, the other day, Israelis warned uh, the Palestinians, if you're in the northern part of Gaza, you should flee south, because we're going to be entering the area. The, the assumption was that they were preparing for ground assault, and uh, that, that indeed now is happening. So, about a million people displaced now internally within Palestine. Um, plus, you know, anyone in the south that was already displaced by their own homes being destroyed. So, roughly half the population of the Gaza Strip right now is fundamentally squatting in a ruined building. Uh, without food, without water, without electricity. Uh, you've gotten statements from some members of the Israeli government that amount to a, effectively applauding the concept of collective punishment. Herzog, the fucking president of Israel the other day, is like, well, uh, the people of, of uh, Palestine are... Not blameless in this. They could have rejected the Hamas government and risen up and uh, refused to deal with them. Yeah, uh, unfortunately they would have been shot uh, because they don't have the guns. This is kind of the point of the Second Amendment, by the way, just so for anyone listening out there, uh, this is the reason why you should not give up your AR-15. Anyway, this is uh, dangerously close to provoking a regional war. Uh, you can think that the raids are justified, and a lot of them are rescue missions, effectively, where they're trying to go in and recover, you know, the hopefully live individuals that have been captured by Hamas. That's great. Uh, unfortunately, it seems that they're finding as many bodies as live people. Uh, it's, the problem is that the methodology by which this is happening crosses or nearly crosses a red line that's been stated by multiple other regional entities. Um, with, with more firepower than Hamas, Hezbollah among them, uh, the Iranian government, um, I, I think Assad might weigh in at some point, Syria, although I mean, he's got his own fucking problems, the Lebanese government, uh, to an extent the Egyptian government right now appears to be peeved, although they're largely going along with Israel at the moment because they don't want any problems. Like, oh, well, you're going to bomb any aid convoys we try to send across our border into Gaza. Uh, maybe we'll hold off for right now and, and not poke the bear. Probably a wise decision, given what's currently happening. Um, but uh, localized raids, which is what they're being called by the sympathetic Western press, it's still a ground assault. Um, and Israeli troops crossing into Gaza was explicitly mentioned as a red line by several entities within the region, again, with more firepower than Hamas. It risks, it brings you at least perilously close to a regional war. Now, under normal circumstances, when this kind of thing breaks out, so one side has attacked the other, the other side has responded, the other side responds, and, and it sort of begins spiraling out of control. Under normal diplomatic circumstances, the United States, largely as the guarantor of Israel, has stepped in diplomatically and attempted to quickly broker at least a limited ceasefire. And the reason why you want to do that is that if people stop bombing each other for just a few weeks, things simmer down a little bit. And of course, uh, people, saboteurs on both sides that want the fighting to continue will attempt to cause the fighting to continue. But by and large, you can diffuse the situation long enough so for people to calm down to the degree that it's necessary uh, for diplomacy to resume. Um, it often takes a long time. Ceasefires are often repeatedly breached by one or both sides or third-party groups, but in the end, eventually you return to that seeming calm that is the hallmark of the Levant region. Well, at least there's no active rocket attacks going on right now. But it could always happen next, uh, next Tuesday. That's basically the best that you've been able to hope for there for hundreds and hundreds of years. <laughs> well, technically several thousand. Uh, that's normally, though. The problem is we currently have a U.S. administration that shows no real proclivity towards wanting to make peace when a proxy war or, or other conflict breaks out. Cue up, for instance, Ukraine and Russia. Under normal diplomatic circumstances, an attempt would be currently made to reach some sort of peace deal or at least a ceasefire, some sort of cessation of hostilities. But that would require that the U.S. government be willing to lean on the Ukrainian government to give an inch. So far, uh, no good, uh, rather than simply pumping the region full of money. We may be seeing currently a diplomatic swing towards that, low-key. Uh, of course, Blinken's comments the other day, basically, uh, towards Ukraine. Well, we're getting uh, towards the end of our rope with regards to how much money and shit we can give you. You know, we've exhausted our ammo stockpiles. We can't start giving you even more toys because we've already given you pretty much all the toys we can feasibly give you. 
It's funny, the Dutch sending their only F-16s to Ukraine as well, probably hoping to buy F-35s. I'm not sure if uh, people in the Amsterdam area would be too happy if an aircraft that loud were taking off from Schiphol Airport, just saying. Uh, have you heard one? <laughs> the F-16 might as well have a bunch of suppressors on its engine, uh, by comparison. Those things go off like a goddamn nuke. Uh, but this is an, let's not mince words, this is a ground assault. This was the red line mentioned by other entities in the region. It may be helpful in terms of recovering hostages. Of course, the problem is imagine an IDF group goes in and they get pinned down and Hamas takes them hostage. Uh, then you've got a bigger problem. I mean, anytime that you're entering that region where Hamas is reasonably well dug in, you risk those individuals being killed or captured as well. And nobody in their right mind really wants to be a captive of Hamas. Like, you'd probably be better off in a Colombian drug prison or something. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I can imagine that uh, people get a little bit nervous when they have to cross the border. Also, it was weird, on the West Bank, uh, in other news, uh, the other day there was like a pizzeria that had the uh, one of the dead captives. They were using it for marketing their pizza, and the IDF went crazy and went in and destroyed the pizza shop. And uh, people have a split opinion on that as well, because, you know, they're, they're definitely being quite crass and disrespectful, but you just destroyed a pizzeria uh, with, with military machinery, wasting troops that potentially could have been used for, you know, in Gaza, uh, routing out actual terrorists or something. So people have a split opinion on that as well. Uh, basically, this is my summation. Right now is a really bad time to be engaged in any form of conflict when you're part of a clear east-west sphere thing because the western sphere does not have a leader. Uh, instead you have a system of leaders. The French, the, Br the British, the Germans, the United States, etc. are all intercompeting entities on a diplomatic scale right now. The United States right now because it has feckless and weak so-called leadership instead of an actual singular war leader uh, doesn't have the ability to really step in diplomatically and defuse situations. And that's assuming, of course, that they want to. Blinken's comments with regards to Israel and Palestine the other day, and in concordance with his on Ukraine, really make it seem more like they're rooting for a forever war. Oh yeah, go ahead, keep killing each other. Raytheon and, and Northrop Gunman, uh, Grunman stop, uh, stock is rising uh, very quickly right now. Yeah, Boeing is up, and, and all of these, uh, you know, half of Congress has stock in these companies, so I'm sure that they're very happy. Their portfolios are definitely doing well. wonder how the Pelosi's are doing. They probably, are we going to find out that they bought 10 trillion shares of Boeing right before this happened? A bunch of Raytheon and so far, you know, <laughs> probably. Lockheed, uh, probably. Their portfolio might have made a little bit of a swing in the weeks leading up to this. Of course, through Menendez, they could have gotten insider trading tips from Egypt, supposedly. So uh, that would have that would have worked for them. Uh, this is, by the way, how the system actually works at the top. So uh, the hope is that at some point the fighting dies down, but it doesn't really show any signs of stopping. It's it's getting worse right now uh, with ground incursions that are likely to grow. Maybe you're sending in local raid groups initially, trying to recap, trying to get back the captives. Because once you get enough of the captives back, or you can vouch for the fact that they've already been dead, you can bomb the shit out of the region. And as long as people are terrified enough to have evacuated out of the general zone, you can pretty much flatten Gaza City if you want to. Well, the only people left there are Hamas members. We gave the order to evacuate a week ago. We've already gotten the captives back. We don't have to worry about accidentally killing them. Uh, so who cares? It's beginning to look a lot like there's going to be a Christmas time operation. It's uh, going to involve a hell of a lot of explosives. That's about all. Peace out.